Why didn't that unmute? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is August 2nd, 2019. And we're going to do a little coding, a little project management today. It's going to be fun. We're going to get into this. We're going to we're going to revisit talk about some of the things that we've done here over the last the last few weeks and uh, do a little cleanup in GitHub, do a little organization, a little management of some of the things we have out there, and uh, and get back into writing some code. How's it going, chat room? So good to see you. Copper Beardy, hello, hello. Copper Beardy, I saw, had a tweet this morning uh, uh, showing off the sticker pack. Very cool. Uh, is that Philippe Sousa Oliveira? Hello, good to see you. Uh, Ingenium Worker, hello, Stelzy, Ancient Coder, Musical Bookworm, and Caparino. Now, why didn't that Tacos command work? We should have seen the Tacos fire. Oh, because you had a thing in front of it. It has to be the only, the only command in there, and you should see the Tacos fire. There you go. Everybody loves Tacos. Fantastic. Um, and there they go flying over my face. Let me um let me get some music going and I want to show you a couple things. I want to talk about some of the neat things that I've seen that are happening uh literally right now on the internet and uh yeah, I'm going to be your captain today, Captain Marvel today. We're going to go through and talk about some of the really cool things. Think some of the cool things that are going on, give you a quick update and uh on on some things that I want to accomplish here offline and we'll get back into our code. Uh, let me see here. So let's get some music playing. I'm going to play, um, let's play Orange. There we go. This is music to code by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. It's been scientifically designed. It's been engineered to get you in the groove, to get you in the flow. So that whatever task you might be working on, whether it's writing code, doing homework, blogging, um, editing videos, all those other things that you're concerned about kind of fade away and you get focused completely on the task at hand. Check it out. Music to Code By. That's at mtcb.pwop.com. You can execute the music command in the chat room and you can learn more about these really great songs that are available to you. Thank you, Carl. We appreciate you letting us listen to your music here live on stream. <gasps> Did I just see THE Mike Eaton wander into the chat room? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I love seeing all the folks that are here. It's great. Look at that. Yep, there he is. With that rainbow hat. Very cool. Very cool. All right. It's a new shaker that I'm using, and uh, the blue is disappearing in the green screen. Nice. Very nice. So I've got a couple things that I want to show you. I want to share with you. Let me let me start with. I mentioned that our friend Copper Beardy, um, and I hope you don't mind. I'm going to share your tweet here real quick because I think it was a great tweet. Um, our friend Copper Beardy received one of these sticker packs that I sent out. Um, where the heck did it go? Da, 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 da. There it is. Let me pop this out into another browser and bring it over here uh, there we go let's go over to that view there we go there's the the sticker pack that copper beauty received I've been I've been just just subscribed. Subscribed. now why did I get it always happens the first one is doubled Thanks so much for the for the sub, Avi Desk. I really appreciate that. Or is it AVI Desk? Uh, thanks so much for your support, and we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo, like we're doing for all of our subscriptions and bits that are cheered throughout the the quarter here. Thank you so so much for your support, and that's Twitch Prime. That you get that free. You get a Twitch Prime sub free if you have an Amazon Prime account. Click the button right above my head here if you are an, a if you aren't a Twitch Prime subscriber, and uh, you can link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one channel you can subscribe to, free here on Twitch. Remove the ads and get all the cool emotes. Thanks so much for sharing your Twitch Prime subscription with me this month. 
Um, so what I'm thinking, you know, thanks so much, Copper Beardy, for sharing uh, a picture, and I'm glad that they arrived. I sent out a handful of stickers. Um, what I'm thinking is it, I want to continue encouraging folks to follow so we can get this follower number out to that magical 8,000 so I will dye my beard rainbow for TwitchCon and .NET Conf. Um, Svava! Now see, it's not reading the What Mischief. What Mischief, indeed, we're going to make it better right now. We're going to improve things. We're going to make it more interesting. Here's what I'm going to do. I, I've got a bunch of these stickers available, and I've got things... I, I just found I've got a pack of .NET bot stickers. Tim Hewer. Tied you have just resubscribed for two months. Now that's the wrong. No, no, you, you didn't pronounce it right. It's Tim Hewer. Hey Tim, thanks so much for the sub. Really appreciate that. I've also got some NuGet. There it is. Some NuGet stickers. I've got these stickers. Here's what I'm going to do. Each time we cross a hundred follower milestone, as we get closer to that eight thousand, I'm gonna I'm gonna run a, a quick giveaway, and we'll send out a sticker pack to to somebody who's in the chat room. So, um, the rainbow bearded folks that you see here, I think I have a couple more of the super C sharp ones. I definitely have more of the the cool bot with the sunglasses. So we'll send out sticker packs as we approach each one of those milestones. And we're about 30 from our next one. This number isn't quite right for some reason. Um, th there's a follow unfollow thing that uh, Stream Elements doesn't pick up on quite right there. Um, so let me click through. I'm going to reset that number real quick just to make sure that it's accurate because I like accuracy. Um, so that's what. I want to do to help encourage and get us through some of these uh, some of these follower goals as we get a little bit closer. Um, I just have to go into stream elements and the data and the goals and the number that Twitch is reporting right now is seventy one sixty nine. There we go. There we go. That's updated. Good. All right. Um, tweet about it. Sure, you could tweet about it. Absolutely. Um, um, new follower incentive and following is always free um, uh, let's see you know what I have Twitter open right here why don't I just write it in front of you huh you know what I mean um, we have a new follower incentive on my Twitch channel um, at every multiple of 100 followers uh, approaching 8,000, I will give away um, a an emote .NET sticker pack uh, to a random chat room participant, right? At 8,000, I will dye my beard rainbow for DNet Conf. There it is. And TwitchCon. Oh, we're six over. Six characters over. Um, at every... Yeah, at every 100 followers. I think that's fine. Now I should say every multiple of. I will give away a sticker pack. That's fine. Um, there we go. Um, buffering loop got you. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Copper Beardy. Welcome back. There's the tweet. All right, um, and who was it? So Stelzy says, yesterday Ninja became a co-worker of mine at Mixer. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's a thing that happened yesterday for those of you that haven't seen it. Um, 
of course, we all know who Ninja is. That's um, Tyler Blevins. Um, and he tweeted... He tweeted this. He's um, departing Twitch, and he's now going to be streaming exclusively on Mixer. There he is. Um, more power to him. That's great that he's able to negotiate, and um, I'll share this tweet here in case anybody wants to see it. Um, Blazer Mr. Magoo. Blazer Mr. Magoo just resubscribed for 16 months. Thanks so much. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that sub. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Thank you very, very much. Um, so Ninja leaving Twitch and going to Mixer, I think is a very good thing for for the streaming community. It, it very quickly legitimizes Mixer. And if you remember, we streamed for a while on Mixer way back in January, February, March of 2018. Um, it was an experiment. We syndicated to both platforms. Um, it's a violation for me to do that. It's a violation of my partner contract with Twitch. I cannot do that anymore. Um, Mixer's a nice platform. They have some, some interesting features there. It's a little bit short on facilities and things that I use regularly here on Twitch. Um, you will not find me streaming on Mixer. Um, and uh, I am very much coupled to, and, and we've grown, and we've built a really great community here on Twitch. I will, I will be here on Twitch for the foreseeable future, unless something significant changes in order to force me to, to go over to Mixer. That said, um, I would like to uh, I would like to think that that because uh, right here's the biggest name, 14 million followers going over to Mixer, um, and he's already gotten a couple hundred thousand folks. I, I haven't looked at the number this morning. I'm, I'm not going to bring up and look at Mixer here um, live on Twitch. Um, never knew who he was till yesterday. Well, let me tell you, he was the number one followed account on Twitch. Um, he's got a couple hundred thousand folks following him on Mixer. Clearly, in order of magnitude, off from where he was on Twitch. Um, but this this does help immediately legitimize that platform, and hopefully, that means that um, as Mixer is aggressively innovating, we'll see some more aggressive innovations from Twitch. Um, I, Twitch is a great platform. They do some amazing things here. Um, I think they've slowed down some of their outward-facing innovations that you as viewers can directly participate in. And um, I think this is clearly a shot, a signal, that, that's going to tell Mixer, uh, tell Twitch, you got to step up and, and make sure you retain viewers here. So I'm very excited to see what happens there. It's fine if you're still following me on Mixer. I may show up there again someday, but it's it's available, it's over there if we need to go over there. Let me take a look here at the chat room. Toba Nautilus says, uh, just to let me know what impact I have on the community with all the streams and motivating and encouraging, you just got your second post on one of the largest German com Microsoft communities, Tobo Nautilus. We gotta celebrate that. Congratulations. How to visualize your room climate using Microsoft's Graph API with Excel, and it was published. Tobo Nautilus, can you do me a favor? Can you share that link with us? I'd love to open it up here and share your link here with our chat room, with our viewers. If you're out there on YouTube or or somewhere else and you're watching this video, um, I'd love to show you show and and share uh, what you've built here. That's tremendous, Tobo Nautilus. Um, congratulations to you. That's that's great. Um, let's see here. Those are folks. Uh, Ancient coders asking who f if that's the number that followed him or subscribed. Those are follows. Fourteen. I think it was fourteen point five million follows on uh, on Twitch. About two hundred and fifty thousand follows is what I'm seeing on Mixer. He did not outgrow Twitch. Not in the least. Um, my understanding is this was clearly a bidding war. To get his services. Um, 
PewDiePie being on DLive, there is some competitiveness starting now. Yes, uh, PewDiePie is on the DLive service. He's the most popular YouTuber out there by strictly by subscriber numbers and viewers, um, which is something that doesn't make YouTube very happy at all. They want to legitimize and be able to sell to regular commercial companies. And to have PewDiePie as their number one is not the best for them. There we go. Tobo Nautilus has a link to us there on on his uh, GitHub. Uses the, uh, is that Pimeroni in Viral Hat to log specific values to the Graph API? Okay, that's a cool looking project. And, and your article that links to this, okay, that looks really cool. Right, that looks really cool, being able to have Excel reporting online. And the article that goes with this, it's German, that's, that's fine. Um, doesn't look like it does. I, there's an English translation button here. But congratulations. Love seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great stuff. Big congratulations to you. Um, let's see here. There are rumors that Ninja at some time had regularly 500,000 from subscribers alone in one month. Stelzy, that number sounds about right. It, it's not rumors. That's, um, it, uh, it was clearly reported by Associated Press that those numbers were accurate. And that's fine. Terrific. Yeah, he did mention at 1.200,000 subs. Twisted AFID reports. Yes. So, I mean, a half a million a month... Right, that's six million dollars a year. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so there's there's definitely something there as far as earning potential, right? And I mean, getting hundreds of thousands of people to watch you is is not easy to do. And entertaining um, video like that, absolutely. That's very snackable. People can drop in, watch a battle royale game for 15, 20 minutes, and they see the complete story from the beginning of the match to the to the point that the streamer is eliminated. Very clear beginning and end. Where watching a stream like mine and some of the other creative folks, um, like Fairy Wings and Fierce Kittens and Imperial, um, when they stream, you're seeing just a piece of what's going on. Right? Hey, we're going to spend part of today and we're going to be making this. Imperial yesterday was making was making stuffed uh, corgis, corgi dogs. And she'd already finished a good bit of it, but she finished stuffing the dogs and sewing them closed yesterday on stream. But you didn't see the whole story, right? So to have, it's not snackable like that. You're stopping in for a visit. Hey, Space Shot is here. Um, the question from Tobo Nautilus is, does Mixer... Is it uh, for gaming or also for dev development and just chatting streams? Yeah, Space Shot is right. Mixer is a streaming platform. Stream whatever you'd like. There is definitely a lean, a significant lean. They've put their thumb on the scale, as it is, to encourage gaming streaming. But just like Twitch, uh, they they want any kind of broadcast over there. <laughs> Someone stuffed a corgi. It's their little stuffed, stuffed animal corgi dogs, yes. Um, games with rounds that last 5 to 30 minutes, Space Shot says, are snack bites that people can g join in on easily. Absolutely. You can join in, watch that 5 to 30 minutes. That, it's almost Fortnite, when you think about it, as it, not just Fortnite, but the other Battle Royale games are very casual in the same sense as picking up a game on your phone and playing it for a little bit and being able to put it down later. It's, right, you, you play for for 5 minutes, 30 minutes, depending how far you get in it, it's very snackable. You can put it down and walk away versus playing something like one of the Super Mario games or or one of the Legend of Zelda games, right? That are very long format. And you're going so far, you're going to save and come back next time. So, um, Freestyle Coder is going to start a dev stream in a few weeks. Great! More power to you. 
um, folks that run dev streams here on Twitch, I'm happy to cross promote and encourage. Um, there's and we're always supporting folks that are on the live coders team. You can see the link right over there on chat. You can execute the live coders command here in the chat room as well. The big story with PewDiePie is more of the kind that YouTube not having any proper and direct communications with him as the biggest YouTuber with more than 97 million subs. Yes. Yes. So. All right. It, uh, we, Sean points out it's why Hearthstone works so well with streaming. It, yes, exactly. Right? The card game Hearthstone works very well with streaming because the card game lasts 5-10 minutes tops tops usually five minutes i see games last very very snackable there all right let me head over we got a question on the discord i don't see my discord open and i do see my outlook is open i gotta close that that's a bad bad idea to have that stay open um let me run over to discord we got a question in the Ask Jeff Anything channel over here. Um, and this is a question from Tofu Loaf. And let me see if I can... Can I zoom in on this? Uh, here we go. Let me bring this over. So Tofu Loaf asks... I'm still a relatively inexperienced programmer, but I can't quite figure something out in my head. Blazor prides itself on being able to switch from server side to client side, having an only a single line of code. That's a goal. They're not there yet, but that's a goal to be able to flip flop back and forth. Client side Blazor has the HTTP client built in, but the server side Blazor does not. Um, you can still inject the HTTP client. Let me continue. Server side Blazor doesn't need it. Not necessarily. Um, so when building an application, it's not possible to build a server client agnostic application because you'll still need to determine how the client gets data from the server. That is true. You do need to manage that interaction properly. For example, let's say you're building a client-side Blazor application. You create an entire service layer for your client-side application to call your REST APIs. However, you can't just switch this over to server-side Blazor because you now have an entire layer which has been made redundant. Am I thinking correctly here? Tofu Loaf has a very good question there about you do need to think about how you make these connections back and forth between the various server, uh, various instances of your application. And, it, and it's right. Um, it isn't easy to convert from server to client and back again. The .NET team is working on that. However, when you think about that interaction, this is actually something that I think... And I'm going to put a green check here to show that I've answered this question. This is something that I think we as developers can solve very well with dependency injection. Consider, um, when I was making my requests inside the resource management application, I'm going to look at the source code here for that. When it was running server side, I was injecting a repository object that I was able to use to interact with. And I think I still have it here. Thank you for the follow. I've removed the name from our follower indication. I'm sorry to do that. But I've removed that and I've removed the name from up top because we are continuing to be trolled by some folks that have some less than positive names. Um, but I will call the call out when we do have uh, new followers. Thank you for the follower, GS Volt. I appreciate you joining us. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, so, what we, what we had here was a, a rep, an interface that allowed me to work with my repository objects that you see over here inside the project. We can work with that interface directly inside of our components. So right now my components are down here inside of this client side project. And I can actually move these out into a, into a completely separate project altogether. And as long as I inject that interface for interacting with my data, when I run that data acquisition on the server, I can change how that interface is implemented so that it's working with a server-appropriate repository. 
Or when I'm running on the client, I can change that so it's working with an HTTP client and do that fetching and interaction appropriately with uh, eight, to the appropriate uh, server-side RESTful endpoints. So by adding a layer of abstraction, you're going to get that interaction. You're going to get that appropriately, and now my components behave appropriately going back and forth between the two ecosystems, uh, between the two environments. And I think that is the way to go moving forward. I think that is going to get more folks um, being able to use and reuse their components, not just in Blazor, but imagine if we can render these on a Xamarin application also. And it works now on your mobile devices. Now we're talking. Now we've got truly mobile components that we can use. Not mobile components. Universal components that we can use everywhere. And there's folks already that are embedding Blazor inside of Electron applications. You know Electron applications, right? That's an application that's built on top of the Chromium browser, right? That's the the open source implementation of Chrome, the Google Chrome browser, but on top of Chromium, using just the shell, just the framework of it, it's called Electron, that was built and managed by GitHub, and they build neat applications on top of that, like, like the Discord desktop app, the Slack desktop app, and even Visual Studio Code. So, if I can put Blazor in there, and I can use reuse these components, well, now I've got an application, I've got components that I can put server-side, client-side, and even in a desktop app. And, yep, Janescu's right. You can put Blazor then anywhere. You can put Blazor in Flutter. There you go. There you go. So, all kinds of great ways that you can use Blazor components. You just need that extra layer of abstraction. So, I want to thank the, the question. Uh, who was the question over there? I want to thank Tofu Loaf. For the question, I'm happy to answer it here on channel. Um, if you have a question like that, longer form, you want me to go through and, and answer, drop it in the Ask Jeff Anything entry in that channel. Over here on Discord, I'll drop the Discord channel. There's how you can sign up for Discord. And uh, there's a couple of uh, channels there you can check out, you can wander around. There's even, Carrie posted some very old pictures of me. I look young there, I've got my face painted at a party. And I'm wearing some sunglasses and hanging out coding with uh, with our Dallas. Um, check it out. All right. So that was the qu that question. I also want to show you. This was so cool that this happened. Look at this. We've been working with this web assembly, and I've been saying this is uh, real code recompiled and running in your browser. Look at this thing. This is the original Diablo, right? You remember Diablo, right? Diablo 3 is out now. Well, Diablo 1 was made available with as shareware. This was made available by, uh, is it Dia Surgical on GitHub? And you can play the shareware version of the game. Yeah, it was on Kotaku yesterday. If you still have the CD-ROM, you can point to the MPQ and you can run the full version of Diablo in your browser. It's been recompiled to run on top of WebAssembly. Check this out. This is the same frame, nah, mm, the same runtime that our mono runtime runs on top of for our Blazor components. So if I watch the network here, you can see it's downloading a bunch of JavaScript here to get this thing bootstrapped and running. If I click that play shareware version, look at this! Look at this. It's downloaded, and I've already got it here, right? Diablo spawn, you see this here? Dot wasm. It's the WebAssembly version of Diablo. It's 1.1 meg, but it's compressed down to, to a third of a meg? And you can run it. It, it remembers the hero I created just a little bit ago. And I can... I can play Diablo. I'll go you one further. You can play Diablo on your phone. Because your phone has WebAssembly on it. 
right? I mean, how cool is that? I'm going to mute that because it's a little loud. Right, there's Ogden, the tavern owner. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they this stood. This is so cool. And those cool. who took up arms were slain or, or dragged... Look. WebAssembly is no joke. This is a real thing, all right? Um, so the fact that they took this game, it's what, 10, 15 years old? It's a 15, at least 15 years old. And they've got it running on the phone. It's tremendous. So, um, that's really great to see. And this is, like I said, more WebAssembly capabilities. Really, really great stuff. There's the link in the chat room. Um, Quake 3 in the browser would be killer. Uh, you know what? 1996, it's 23 years old, and it's running in the browser. It took hours to download this. I had it running on my phone in 10 seconds. And it's on my phone, right? I mean, that's insane when you, when you think about the growth of the technology. Really, really great stuff. Um, more power to the folks that are building this. It's the shareware version because, of course, this is property of Blizzard. Um, but tremendous to see that that level of investigation and uh, and work on that. Pluto Nan says, "Can I write a web API in ASP.NET Core instead of MVC or Razor pages? Pages I use a Blazor client. Yes, that's exactly the kind of thing we're doing right now. In this." Uh, resource management application. Your phone is too powerful for Quake 3, says Smab. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I think that's right. <laughs> Consider, your phone, your phone has more power than the entire, more computing power, than the entire Saturn V rocket that sent people to the moon. Think about that for a second. That's insane. We put people to the moon on the moon with with less technology that's in here. What do we do with this? We use it to send funny cat pictures to people. Right? Oh my gosh. Nelson says, do you, "Don't you guys have phones?" Right? Right? Um, let me see here. I didn't download Diablo. Um, the shareware version I did. Yes, the shareware version I did so that I could try the game and decide to buy it. I think Microsoft has done a good job with .NET Core, says Twisted Aphid. Uh, WSL, that's Windows Subsystem for Linux, the upcoming WSL 2, VS Code, and more cross-platform tools. Before these things, I had given up on Microsoft Dev Tools and Windows after working th with them for almost 20 years. There's definitely a lot to be said for that Twisted Aphid. They're really... Um, the, the, this, the direction... The, it's not direction. Um, the movement by the de development tools team is let's go where the developers are. Let's give them the tools. Let's give them the things that they want to see and use where they're working. And you definitely see that happening. Pluto Nan says, I can fly to the moon just with my phone. Confirmed by Fritz. It's right there. The more you know. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so, and I've got a couple more sound effects I loaded up last night. Where'd they go? Yeah. All right. So that's what's going on with that. I want to do some GitHub reorganizing. I haven't, I haven't been sitting in front of my code. Um, I want to... I know, right? Right? Um... So I wanted to look at the resource management and I also want to tidy up. There's a couple of commands that I want to add back in here really quick um, to, to the bot, to enable things. There's the squirrel. I should use the squirrel uh, emote for part of that also. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. I could totally do that. Not a raccoon, a squirrel. You know? Different. Um, oh hey, I am not myself with the oh my. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, well, and and then I think I can merge a little bit here in the resource management application. I can at least merge into the dev branch, I think, and get rid of the feature schedule UI because I, even though it's not complete, I, I want to resolve and compress down some things. It's 
It's getting a little overwhelming. Uh, the simian, it's tacos, plural. Try that one and you'll get the tacos flying by my, my face here. We're 30 followers away from our next sticker giveaway. I should have a, a taco, not a taco, a sticker giveaway goal in there also, I guess. We can, we can do that. So, there you go. So, um, let me go over here to... No, not a taco giveaway. No, no, we're not doing a taco giveaway. Just tacos. Boom goes the dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. That's all we need. So that's new. What was the other one I loaded up? I loaded up another one last night. Where'd it go? Did I put it... Um, did I put it over... Oh, I put it with the theme music. Yeah. Because we're going to dig in here. And, and I purposely grabbed this one because... Um, I'm going to... Yeah. Do I want to merge these? I want to merge these. Look at the derpy. Oh, my gosh. You cannot redeem for tacos, Pluto Nam. Doesn't work like that. Okay? It's illegal in nine countries. I can't mail out tacos. It just doesn't work. Um... I think I think I want to merge these up into the dev branch at the le at the very least. Let's let's get those consolidated down. We've done a ton of work in there. Let's rebase, compress, push it into the dev branch and and get rid of the schedule UI and create some bug fix branches. So we have some shorter lived branches that we're fixing things on. The fact that I have a branch, a GitHub branch here that's lasted longer than a week is a problem. I think that's definitely a problem. You get a taco and you get a taco. Everyone gets a taco, so says Oprah Fritz, according to I Am Not Myself. No, 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 no. There is no Oprah Fritz. Um, so let's merge this, right? I'm gonna dig in here. This is, this is gonna get a little messy. Join me, friends. Here we go. Um, and I'm going to merge into dev from feature schedule UI, and we're going to clobber this branch. Um, yeah, yeah, look and at this. Then? I'm going to have to look at 73 commits. That's a lot. Right? We've got a couple, a couple of changes that have come in from Sean, Marble Kirby, right? Simon with a bunch of these. We're going to rebrace, compress all these down. Not rebase, but we're going to do a compress. So we end up with one commit. Migrated to Blazor client side. And completed a handful of components. Um, yeah, we'll create that pull request. What I really should do, I guess, is rebase before I push it, right? People just keep adding issues into the branch and it grew for months. Oh, on yours, yes. You learn code, you and you learn code, and you learn code. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I want to... I want to... I want to compress this down after it gets over there. Right? Right? I'm going to squash and merge when it gets over there. So, yeah, look at all this, right? I mean, it's tremendous. 73 commits here. We know this builds properly, right? It's been building properly. So, I'm not just going to merge it. I'm going to squash and merge. Right? So, what this does is it'll take that, convert it into, into one commit, and put it on the base branch. Right, and it's all that stuff that we've done. There we go. Um, what do you mean one check failed? Well, it didn't do that last one. That's fine. Um, but now when we go look at the repository, 32 commits, right, and more, uh, oh, I'm on master. Let me go to dev. There we go. Feature schedule UI. It shouldn't say just me there. 
right? It should have squashed and we should have retained all the other authors. Don't. Hmm. Yeah, it should retain all that author information. Right? New invention, taco pizza. Well, isn't taco pizza just a uh, just a stromboli? Gomez's law. The longer your branch is alive, the more reluctant you and your team is to delete it. Yes. Yes. That's definitely a thing. Make it so. Let's delete it. Let's delete that other branch. I don't need it. Um, thank you for the follow, Cus Komen. Welcome. Just made it the new master. Oh my goodness. Let's see here. So. Hey, Code Man Codes. Good to see you. Um... Yeah, there we go. All right. So that merged in and we should yeah, we're I'm clear of the feature schedule UI branch here, which if I go over to my version of it, um uh not now. I don't have packages to publish from here. Um feature schedule UI that I have here should not be the same as uh right it it's, uh, uh, I had already pushed everything over to, to the other branch, to the other place. Right? Um, I had sent a pull request over there and merged it, I thought. Let's look at the closed ones just to make sure it got there. I got rid of that yesterday. We got that one. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't push my latest over there. All right, let's see if we can resolve this a little bit. Let me open a command line. Let's see if we can resolve now. Resolving source control differences is a uh, can be a little bit of a black art here, a little bit of a dark art. There's some arcane conjuring that I'm going to do here to uh, to get all of these commands to work and to get all of our code working properly. So there will be some, some lightning. There will be some magic. And uh, hopefully I don't blow anything up. Right? You know what I'm saying here? Um, let's see. What's different here? The database. I don't care about that database. Um, let me pull from the upstream dev branch. So that's the one that I just merged into that has, oh yeah, oh yeah, three conflicts. There is a way to say, isn't there a way to say, um, force, force the override of the local branch. So let's do this. Um, I want to abort it. Right, there's an abort command I can do up here. Git merge abort. Right, and I'm going to do force because that is the canonical, that is the authoritative version out there. Yeah, you're, you dog. Um... I want to, let me look back up here at the command. I want to keep what's on the remote side. Um, no, no, perform a commit, no. Uh, let's see. Just delete dev and pull from the upstream. That's not bad. I can do that. Right. Um, let me go back to master. Uh, forgot a space there. Let's check out. 
Uh, okay. Get pull upstream dev. You're kidding. Yeah, what am I resetting to if I'm doing a git reset? Um, reset hard to upstream dev. Try that. There we go. Cool. All right. So now when I look at my git log here, there's all the changes that we were working on in the feature UI. So now if I go, now I want to do a diff between the two, right? So I can see the changes, the difference between the two. So I want to do a diff between two branches. Um, can I just specify the names of the two branches? So if I say git diff dev and feature schedule UI, there we go. Um, that's a spacing issue, don't care. Um, that's a spacing issue. That's the new time slot controller that we added. Updates to the user controller. So it feels like there's one commit here that we're short on, right? Um, so what I think I can do, if I look at the log, this is where I'm at. Um, I should be able to rebase that last commit on top of dev here. Um, right, I should be able to do that. Uh, I don't think that's where I wanted to go. Yeah, ooh boy. Um, get rebase abort. There we go. Um, I'm going to grab that last commit over there. Right, if I take a log, look at this log. Um, I think that's the last one that I'm that I'm grabbing here. Because this ends with Come on. Yeah, this ends with that. So I just want to grab this commit, 832 dog 9. Okay. Um, right, if I look at git rebase, let's look at the help there, because I just want to grab that one commit and add it. Right, and rebase, reapply commits on top of another base tip. Exactly. Um, and I want to do it interactively. So, no, 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 no. Uh, options, command onto new base. Okay. So, I'm in. I need to go over to that branch. Okay. Get rebase uh, head uh, dash i head tilde just head. Which will, and I think that'll work if I just go dev. Yeah, it wants to push everything over there. No, I'm not changing anything. Um, git rebase abort. Uh, let's see. I want to push just the one. Can I do that? 
That's not right either. Because I'm looking for that last work in progress one. Uh, it didn't. It didn't flip over. Like that. Nope, that's not it either. Yeah. Hmm. So I yeah, I just want to grab the one. Co is is that is that cherry pick? I thought cherry pick was different. Apply the changes introduced by some existing commits. Well, maybe it is. The current branch and head pointer stay at the last commit successfully. The cherry pick... Gi okay, given one or more existing commits, apply the change each one introduces, recording a new commit for each. This requires your working tree to be clean. Got that. Um, the cherry pick... Uh, okay, the current branch and head pointer stay at the last commit. Cherry pick head ref is set to the point at the commit that introduced the change that is difficult to apply. The paths in the change applied cleanly are updated both in the index and your working tree. Blah, blah, blah. Good. So I think I want to cherry pick, right? If I head over to... I want to grab this one. I'm going to copy that. So if I git checkout dev... Get cherry pick. Okay. Seven files changed. Time slot controller. It applied. There it is. I think we got it. Yeah, cherry pick is what we're thinking of. Very cool chat room caught up to me and corrected me here. Thank you so much, chat room. So I picked that one commit that was over on the feature schedule UI, brought it over, put it on top of the dev branch here, and I'm not going to delete my local version of the feature schedule UI. Let me just come over here, reload. Yep. Uh, I know. I know it's been modified. I know. It's okay. It's okay, Visual Studio. It's okay. We're we're all here. We're happy to help you out here. Okay. Um, you can do it! Come on. M make, come on. You can make that go away for me, Visual Studio. It's okay. Please? Please? Come on, Visual Studio. Come on now. Visual Studio. I expect you to die. I expect you to die. When I say close. Come on. I don't even see you in my list, Visual Studio. What are you doing? You're not even you're barely using the processor, Visual Studio. Come on. Right? You make me sad. So sad. I expect you to die. You're not dying. Thank you. Let's try that again. Oh my. I know, right? You're about to get a serious beatdown. About to get a serious beatdown. Come on. Start up. Reload. Here we go. Show me the project. Show me the project. Show me the project. Yeah, there it is. That's much better. You're amazing. You figured this all out already. I did. I did, Hans. Um, so, right, let me just make sure before I push this into my dev branch, it should still build. The functionality isn't complete, but it should still build. We should still get our unit tests running properly, and I'm watching the restore information down here that you can now see because I moved my noggin and my chair over to this side. Right? All right. Uh, still seeing some green bar filling. I'm feeling good. Eldorian, hey! Eldorian is here. Great to see you. Well, 
Do your best. Well, okay, I will. Um, use cherry pick all the time with trunk based branching when fixing bugs into master that need to go into an existing release branch. Yes. Yes. How's it going, Rambling Geek? Good to see you. Uh, doo -doo. So I've got a couple things here that are showing up with some red underlines, and it's still building. It's st still building. Really, Visual Studio? You have no idea what you're dealing with. It's still building. Right? Not IntelliCode. Built. Five succeeded. We're good. All right. And my tests, let's make sure those run properly. Go, test, go. Go, tests, go. Yep, just the last one that we set up to purposely break. Avi Desk asks, uh, My Visual Studio has a purple status bar, but you like the blue one better. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I believe the blue one is there because this is the preview version. Uh, right, I think, isn't that the indicator that they have for that so if I go over here and I launch the RTM version I think this one gives you the purple bar so you can tell the difference between the one of the ways you can tell the difference between the two let me continue without code and starting that yeah right so same theme but when you look at the two right so not only does it say preview up here in the corner but the RTM one has a purple bar all the preview versions have a blue bar. So. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Death Packs loves the build vision extension so you don't need to monitor the output window. That's not a bad idea. And in VS Code, the colors are op opposite. The regular is blue. The insiders, I thought the insiders was, I thought the insiders was green. Well, the logo is green. Yeah. So I'm on the Insiders version here of Visual Studio Code. And, uh, <clears throat> yep, downloading new stuff. And it's blue also. So now it's, now we're, um, right, and I think the RTM of, Visual Studio Code. And for those that were wondering, my problem with Visual Studio Code and the compiler went away. Um, it just started working again. You can see I'm not even getting, I'm not getting the uh, errors popping up here in the corner that I was seeing about um, the extension manager not working. Here's some Python code I was working on. Um, so... You've got Visual Studio 2019, not Insiders. Enterprise, and it's... Um, I thought I had Enterprise for both of these. Says Nelson. Um, right, I thought... Let me reopen this one. 2019. Yeah, this is Enterprise also, and I have purple. All right. So what gives? Why is the status bar change colors? Because it's not why I thought it did. Hmm. Nita, it works on my machine. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the difference that I always saw between these two was the purple one was my RTM version. And it, yeah, I, I don't know that. If you're saying you're getting blue in Visual Studio 2019 Enterprise also. Um, I see what you're trying to do there. Um, Enterprise 1620 and you've got... So... Um, is that B rousing? Thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. Well, so the versions that I have... Right, I'll let you see the versions that I have in my installer here. 
Do, 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 do. So in Linux, you're getting purple. Hey, welcome. So this is 16.2 in my RTM version, and I have the 16.3 preview one. Those are the two latest ones, and I've got different colored bars. That's interesting. Um, hey, Crows, good to see you. Uh, let's do this. Let's. I'm not quite sure. A Avi Desk, that's a very good question. Um, what is the criteria that sets the status bar color for Visual Studio and Code? We see some in blue, some in purple. It's not clear at all why that is. Huh. Um, that's a really good... Uh, it's not the reason that I thought it was. It, but when you do attach the debugger, it does turn orange. That is one that we. I am very positive of why that happens. Um, let me see here. Um, 24 Minutes has a question about Blazor. Do you know if there are any plans for Blazor to support modify elements by selectors or similar? I'm really missing out stuff like jQuery animations and just modify elements in general. I mean, yeah, there's interop, but then I have no reason to use Blazor if I have that many animations. Like, I do not see why I should use Blazor over MVC then. Um... Apparently, the status bar color... Hang on, let me come back to you. Uh, is that R.U. Anders? <laughs> nice. Um, let me come back to that. Um, Blazor being able to manipulate the DOM is not something that I, I, know, I know of any plans of. I'm not familiar with their roadmap on that. Um, I agree with you. Being able to manipulate the DOM like that is very important. Um, you can pass HTML element references into Blazor. And you can, at that point, do things to that HTML DOM element. Um, there must be a way to do that. And I agree with you. I don't want to hit the JavaScript bridge, the JavaScript interop to do that. We definitely should explore and figure out something around that. Are you Anders? Microsoft says, apparently, the, stat the status bar color down here. Um, purple is when you start a new project or development gets into blue. Build, rebuild, clean is another blue. Brown or orange for debugging. So wait, you're telling me if I go back into here, launch this one, and if I open a project, it will turn blue? Um, not that one. Let's open, here's our conference planner we were working on. So it's purple while it's setting up here. You're telling me it's going to turn blue on me? Maybe. Nope, it turned blue. You're right. Hmm. Blazor doing that just sounds like a wrapper over the JavaScript selectors. It is. It is. Only 13.337 prefers PyCharm on Linux instead of Visual Studio Code. Okay. More power to you. What If that makes you happy, great. Purple when creating a new project. Okay. I didn't go far enough into my test. Um, so, coming back to our project that we're working on here. Let me... Um, ooh, that's not good. Let's go back. So now that, no, 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 no. So we merged this. Let's send over my update to the dev branch. Yeah, I could click that thing and create a pull request immediately. There we go. Uh, no, that's not the one I wanted. No, bad idea. Bad, bad idea. No, 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 bad. Don't do that. Um, I want to create a cross forks. This one. Um, I'm going to merge into dev from my dev. Yeah, I know. I. You're, you're thinking ahead of me here. 
There's nothing to merge. Oh, I didn't push it. I didn't push it up yet. Wait a sec. Uh, head to dev there. Okay, I'm not hooked up to remote. Git push origin dev, and that'll push out to my dev branch. Uh, git pull origin dev. Oh my. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with fly. Think. Let's see what the difference is there. Let's see if we can fix those really quick. Hey, Lily Hazel. Good morning. Oh my. I know, right? I feel shame. I feel shame. There we go. Let's find these. I wish it would just open right to the ones that we need to change. System component model annotations in preview seven. Yes, I want that. Oh, see that extension host terminated on it. That's, yeah, that's a thing, right? So, uh, this one, add that to the, stage it there we go recurring schedule has a change here we need to look at Ugh. Um. I think we need both of those duration text yeah I want that except the current change What? No. No. Accept the current change. Hide that. Down here was the validate. I've got two validates. And I want the incoming. That lines up with that. That lines up with the class. Good. Um, <laughs> wouldn't it be possible for WebAssembly to modify the DOM directly? Should. Should. If that's what you want to do. Oh, jeez. Look at this. This looks like it's strictly a spacing thing. We have the overlaps in the current version. I'm going to take the current change. Okay. Cool. Uh, merged. Yes. Good. So that should be good. Uh, so that should have, when I log, yeah. I still don't have, why doesn't it have origin there? Git push origin dev. There we go. Um, I gotta set up the tracking on that, don't I? I should. And I wanna set that as the upstream, right? What's that command to set the upstream? Uh, git branch set upstream to origin, this thing. I always see this. Uh, it's git branch set upstream, right? Thank you for the follow, <laughs> stand back burrito. Nice. Uh, git branch set upstream, right? Not the git push. Uh, no. Uh, that. Git branch dash u. Uh, origin dev. Cool. Now I get my little indicator there. Fantastic. 
Um, okay. So now my dev, my dev branch is the same up there. And I should compare across forks. And I want to go into this one from... Is that going to work? Thank you. Uh, started work on time slot data loading into the user interface, into the availability uh, component. There we go. Create that. Uh, all right. No, 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 no. Wrong one. Wrong branch. I can't, no, wrong branch. Back to this. I want dev, dev, across forks. I'm merging in from here. Got a couple extra files there, but I, I think I'm going to be okay with that if I squash and merge. So, yeah. And I'm going to grab that exact title. Ah, darn it. What the heck? What the heck? You have no idea what you're dealing with. Yeah, seriously. Um... WebAssembly can cur cannot currently access the DOM directly. Yeah, you have to... It's a mess to get there, but you can do it. Um, queued. Here we go. So we'll see that check run, and we should have that come back. But I'll... I don't want to squash and merge. I just want to merge it. Heck is a fish, actually. Is it? Really? I didn't know that. Um, no, let's stay there. Come over this one. All right. Um, okay, so that should clean that up. And now I'll be working directly. I'll be on the dev branch, but I'm going to check out and create branches going forward that are to allow me to focus on just the individual bugs. And, and I want to start on focusing on just cards that I'm working on. So I don't end up with these long, long lasting branches that are just a pain to deal with. Failing after 29 seconds. What? It was just working. I could rerun it here. Get failed with fetch code. Well, then rerun the git fetch. That's, that's not. It's an outdated check. Okay, view latest. Show me the latest one. In progress. Good. So I want you to start sending PRs into dev. And we need to put together a little document around where to work. Um... There we go. That looks weird. Fantastic. All right, so that ran properly. This should update in just a second and show that it did merge properly. Right? Uh, right? Green. No green. Um, thank you for the follow, Wernus. Appreciate you joining us. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. That's 
weird that it's not marking it as completed successfully. Um, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, let's squash and merge. Um, I don't need to comment on that. Just do it. Cool. I'm not going to delete the branch because that's where I'm going to merge things into locally so I have a track of what's out here in dev. So now over here... I will pull upstream dev so that it matches and I'll push so I have the same version here locally in my private repository. Cool. So now when I look at my branches here, I'm going to get rid of the branch there from Sean. Clear that out. Oh, I forgot the space again. I can get rid of that feature UI. Cool. So now I'm back down to just the two. No, why did I? No. I just want to clear the screen. So, I've got that cleared up. I feel a lot better. I feel like this is a lot, a lot better organized at this point. We still have some features, that some things to finish and clear up here. Um... But I want to step away from this for a second and do a, one more bit of housekeeping around the sentiment analysis. The bit that you see over there, right in the middle of the of the screen. Um, the sentiment analysis, we, this has been reported here for the better part of the last six months? About six months. We started this feature back in February. And I've gotten a, a handful of requests about it on YouTube um, from, I believe it or not, from a random guy. I can't make this up. Um, no, I don't want to go to random guy's channel. I want to go to... I want to go to... the, the comments over there. So this was... from earlier in the week. Um, asking, what's the deal with the happiness meter? So it's checking the sentiment. Is there a video? And I linked the video about how it gets made. And I, I really think that I need to edit together and create a little bit of a highlight video that shows how we built that and make that available for folks to be able to see a little bit about what that is, where it comes from, because I think there's a lot for folks to learn from that. So that's something that I think I, I want to record separately because I want to script that out excuse me I want to script that out pretty good but for folks here on chat I think Hugo makes a very good point here we should have a sentiment command that explains to you what the sentiment what the value is which way it's trending and um, information about the current trend I think this is a um and a very simple and helpful command that we can add. And this is a little bit more than the text commands that we currently have because we're going to fill in variables here from the current analysis. So I need to do just a little bit more work there to figure out and grab that data and insert it into the text. So what I'd like to do is just take a couple, couple, a couple, take a little bit here and put that piece together. You with me, chat room? You think do you think that'll be helpful for some of our new friends as they join the chat room to be able to see what's going on and follow along? Let me know. We are 26 followers from our next milestone in a sticker giveaway. Um I'm just going to take a quick look here while I'm waiting for chat room to catch up. Make sure nothing else is going on. Um, Johnny Nibbles got his stickers. Fantastic. Let's see what else is going on here. Cool. So it pops up periodically, suggests Sean. Um, I don't know. Um, I see what you're trying to do there, Zex. Um, 
Thank you for the follow. Um, let's see here. Let's do this. I'm not sure I want it to pop up periodically. If I, as a timer to have it pop and show up, that's something that we haven't built yet. I wouldn't mind just making it, I can make it a comment pretty quick, uh, a command pretty quickly. But to make it appear um, on a regular basis as a timer is not something that we currently have the structure to build. I hosted service with a timer in the background is the way to do that, but I would need to build and set up a little bit there. It's a little bit more than I wanted to go through in the next half hour before we we're out of our time together here today. Let's um let's do didn't I do something like that for project timers? No. That wasn't me, I don't think. Let me add this command the way it is right now, and we can we can expand on it later. Because this I can I can get done pretty quickly. Turning it into a timer later is very doable when doing the all day um, I don't think so I don't think so I, I could be wrong I don't remember that um, so let me change let me change projects here I'm gonna go over to stream tools yeah, it's stream elements that's that that was running and showing that. Yes, that wasn't something that I wrote. That was the stream elements bot saying that. Yeah. Um, so I currently have the sentiment analysis here, um, and it receives the one minute and five minute sentiment to paint on the screen. Um, that's coming out of. Where is it? Console.log hub on sentiment. And the face class name has the takes the instant and decides whether to make it a smile or a frown. Um, thank you for the host. I appreciate that. A C sharp library with the equivalent of PowerShell set Azure AD user extension. Um, Jeremy Knight asks, well, you can do you can set your Azure AD information oh you want to set up an Azure AD user I don't know about that there might be an Azure client package that'll do that um, yeah I, I see somebody is still trying to troll us they're finding they're trying to find different ways to troll us right now um so it this is receiving this um, out of if I go to stream tools and I look at the hubs everything runs out of this follower hub at this point um, and there is a where's the proxy that does that that calls through this um, Nope, those are background services. Right, we've done a lot with this um, stream tools. I thought... No, I don't see the proxy. There's a proxy that sends stuff... Not the Twitch proxy. Um, no, it's not just proxy, but it's like my signal R proxy that sends information down, right? Like the GitHub controller receives 
This oh, it's a client is what I called it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's my signal R client that it's passing information down. Uh, followers, followers, GitHub. There it is. Update sentiment. This right here. It passes the five minute sentiment and the all sentiment. This is being called from the sentiment service. So this is running in the background. And when it receives messages, it calculates the sentiment over the last however many minutes and saves it and uh, makes it available. Um, I don't want to send that anywhere. You might update, uh, implement some sentiment analysis for user feedback should suggestions. That way all uh, could see if an update has had an effect. That's a cool idea. Okay. Definitely. Um, so this is calculating and, and making it available. I feel like because there's one of these, this is set up and this is a singleton that's being managed. Right? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, startup. Services required configuration, sentiment service. Where is it? This is an iHosted service. We have a, um, there's a thing in the startup that adds these as a singleton in the background. Right, let's just make sure of that. There's that one. Register configured services, services required configuration. Yeah, this is what adds it. So, and it adds it as a singleton. So this is made available. There's one and only one of these. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate these sentiments and put them on a static property so that I can reach over from the command and, oh, wait a sec. The oh boy, here we go. This is that, this is that back and forth. We need to create a, a this is an inverse dependency that we're going to see here because this signal R service depends on right that uh, depends on the chat bot so we need to get the data from the chat the chat bot needs to turn around and get the data from this so how do we do that how do we get that data to flow upstream effectively um, so we have this thing sentiment sync which has this recent chat messages here and that's the queue of values and this is sitting in chatbot commands right here I think we put the va the what's it called right here public static double um, right, this is referenced four places. Let's grab that one, pin you, and I want to receive the uh, one minute, five minute, and instant. So let's call this sentiment instant get set. Uh, static double uh, sentiment uh, one minute minute there we go static double sentiment five minutes so now it's available if I publish those values over into there um so we can say sentiment sync dot 
sentiment instant equals that. And put that right back in there. Sentiment sync, sentiment with five minutes equals that. And let's replace these over here. Yeah, good. Right, do I have that right? All sentiment. Uh, I have that backwards. I think I have that backwards. Average score is the new one that just came in. That's the overall. That's the all sentiment. Not the instant. I don't... Let me... I've got this backwards. This needs to go here. That needs to go there. Okay. So now I have those values here. So now I can create a command. Sentiment command. Sentiments ink is when you get a smiley tattooed on your face. Whoa! Oh my lord. This is a basic command. <laughs> um, our trigger is going to be uh, sentiment. Right? Right? Uh, yeah. Um, description. Information about the sentiment analysis features of the chat room. Yeah. Cool down. Um, I'm going to give that a 30 second cooldown. No reason to keep firing it. Alright, so when it executes, I can reach into the sentiment sink and grab out those volume, values. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sentiment sink is when your sentiment hat shows just the sentiment score live in an e ink display on your hat. <laughs> Okay, that looks really cool now, the color of my uh, my beverage there, because it's turquoise. Nice. Um, let's see here. So when I'm executing, if I want to use what Hugo's suggesting here, let's put together what that looks like. Um, the out message is going to look something like this. Um, the current sentiment is... So the current sentiment that's being painted there, let's make sure we get this right, because I always, I always get this backwards. So if we look... Um, right, so I return not the all, right? That is being presented, but I return the current sentiment and what's in the current sentiment element this one sentiment L is the one minute um, the sentiment over the last minute is uh, sentiment sync, sentiment one minute, um, yep, two string, and we're going to format it like that, 
and trending. Now we're going to need to conditionally set both of those. Um, you know what? Let's break this into... Uh, let me put together a string builder. So a string builder is an object that you create here to put together strings because allocating strings and concatenating things together actually is a memory intensive operation because you're creating these objects and you're destroying them very quickly. So I'm going to create a string builder here so we can just manage the creation of this a little bit so that it's in a couple different steps. Um, and trending, and now I've got two different things here. Is it trending downward? Is it trending upward? The trending, when it decides which arrow, is if the five minute is less than the one minute. So, we want to append appropriately that message. Uh, just a viewer asks, string builder is mutable. Um... What do you mean by it's mutable? It allows us to concatenate. It does create new strings each time. So it creates, it is, what it puts together is immutable. It just manages the memory a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to decide what to append. Which one of these two messages, in trending downward down arrow, or not. So to do that, just like I did over here, I'm going to do that same thing. If the five minute is less than one minute, then it's up. Okay. So I'll say that less than that. Um, and trending upward up arrow or I'm going to say and trending uh, downward down arrow okay and I need an extra paren there for that test there we go um And trending upward and trending downward. SB append uh, over the last five minutes, compared to the last five minutes. Okay, so that takes care of that. The trend is mostly, now it's gonna be positive or negative, and the smile is actually the instant. Where is it? The smile. There it is. It's the instant one. So that's okay. Um, we'll fix that. Mention here. The trend is mostly... And I think I can leave it as smiley or frowny faced. I can leave it as smiley. I don't think I need to pivot between the two. Um... What's a good heuristic to use to determine when you might need string builder? Um... If I'm executing something on a regular basis, just subscribed. RT Hillfigure, thanks so much for the subscription. I really appreciate that. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo, like we do for all of our subscriptions and cheers this quarter. Thanks so much for your support. Really appreciate that. And that was with your Twitch Prime account. Thank you so much for sharing your Twitch Prime with us. Um... Always appreciate those. Um, it's not the trend is mostly positive. The most recent messages were, and then I'm going to say, oh, I said and then. Uh, we're gonna put something here. Um, and then? I know, right? There we go. 
So I'm going to do a test okay. here. I okay. <laughs> uh, sentiment instant, and uh, I'm going to say is that less than or equal to zero point five? Right? Is it is it less than or equal to? No, I do it the greater than or equal to. Then it's going to be. Um, thank you for the follow. Uh, is that Tauv's dev? Welcome. Uh, we're positive. Otherwise, it's negative. And I should put parentheses around these. So that whole thing gets evaluated. There we go. All right. That's what I want to return. So I'm going to say chat service dot uh, send message async, and I can await that. So I'm going to make this async here. I'll await this. Uh, and I'm going to output the contents of our string builder. That should do it. I have the same logic in two places for the positive negative compare. Um, you're talking about both here and over here. Yes, one is in one is in JavaScript. One is in C sharp. And it's simple enough to manage. I'm not too concerned about that because it's literally just a positive negative. I'm okay with that. So about the string builder, thank you level 002. Um, when I see something that's going to be executed repeatedly, and this is going to be executed uh, many times over the course of a stream, right? Potentially once every 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to use the string builder for this. That and I'm, I'm putting together a string that's pretty complicated, this message that I'm outputting. So also to help me with managing the clarification of this, the, the clarity of what it's doing here and breaking up each one of those tests and formats as a separate, um, and that's not going to give me a percentage there. I need to put that there because I, th yeah. By putting the percent there, it'll do the multiplication for me. Um, by, by breaking that up makes it a little bit clearer to me exactly what this is doing. When you find yourself writing the same string over and over, you can use string intern to hold those in a central pool to save memory. Yeah. Yep. So this is, right, it's making it clear exactly what each step of this is doing instead of it being a really long string that's wrapping and, and just annoying to manage. Um, so let me try running this. So I'm actually going to end up with two chat bots running here. But I want to be able to run the sentiment message against the debug bot that's going to be launched and running here. Right? Here it comes. So it's running. We need some messages out here. So a good message might be tacos. Everybody loves tacos, right? Happy, fun, sunshine, rainbows, and sentiment. There we go. Unicorns, yeah. So that's a slightly different uh, version than what's running here locally. The production one has 79.1. That 83.5 is just over the last little bit here. Happy fluffy unicorn poop indeed, spooky coder. You must be talking to our friend Fairy Wings. Um, but I think that's good. It, it, I mean, right, We in, what, 20 minutes here, we put this together and it's very quickly and, and easily showing us um, the sentiment there. Deeply unhappy. Sure, go ahead. Make it go unhappy. Go ahead. Break it. I can't stand mean people. Don't mess with the... Uh, uh, don't mess with the Visual Studio. I don't know. Sentiment. 
There you go. Trending, trending upward compared to the last five minutes. All the unicorns are dead. Oh no, all the unicorns are dead. <laughs> it's so sad. And if we try it again. Yeah, negative. The most recent messages were negative. The unicorns are dead. Cool. I like it. I like it. That was a great idea, Hugo. And I think we can add our new sentiment command. Make that available. So... Let's take a look here. Yep, it, there's our new command and our updates to the service so that we're uh, managing that appropriately. So uh, let's add our new things. Let's commit. And we are going to say uh, added the sentiment command as suggested uh, by Hugo in, what's the issue number there? 312. There we go. Push that up. And... Should see it referenced. There we go. Added the command. Thanks for the suggestion. That's great stuff. Now I will... I think I'm on... What version am I on? 1.15.1, so let's build... 115.2. So I've got a script out there that will build the Docker container, tag it, tag my Git repository, and upload, publish the Docker container to my private Docker registry so that I can make it work. My, I can put it into the thing. It doesn't match. Arrow up and sad face with 65.9. Um, there were two different instances of the bot, so they had different collections of data at that point. Um, and yes, there is a, a delay there that you're seeing. So, it, it, it should match to my eyes because I'm seeing it live in both places. But there is a three to five second delay between when I uh, publish excuse me, between when I stream something and you see it. What about enhancing the Twitch follower goal to track the rate of change to predict when you will reach the goal? Well, let me tell you something about Social Blade. This is a website that I go to and I can key in here my username and it will show you exactly how my channel is progressing. You can key in anybody's here. Click on future projections and it'll show you when you're going to reach uh, various milestones. So clicking the milestone, I'll hit 7,500 on September 2nd. Um, right? It's saying in two months at the end, October 2nd, we're still not going to be at 8,000 yet. So we need to nudge a little bit here so we can accelerate that. Otherwise, by their predictions, by their model, we're not going to make it. So some things to keep in mind. But you can see my daily followers and my daily video views all trending upward, all increasing here um, since they started tracking me back in April of 2018. Um, B minus is actually scored based on my size, that that my audience size here. Um, that's how that's happening there. Thank you for the thank you for the follow, Gormac. Appreciate you joining us. So B minus is actually pretty good. Um, when you look at the top lists, that's where, right? And I go over to Twitch, um, top 500 followed streamers. That's where you see the A plus pluses, right? A plus because they've got millions of followers, right? A's down here in the million followers, right? B's, hundreds of thousands of followers. 
right? So, B plus, look at that. So, B minus because I've got 7,100, almost 7,200 followers. That's pretty good. Pretty good. 120,000 channel views. I know. I know. Isn't that awesome? Um, fantastic. The bot's published. It's, it's available for us to run next time. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I really like that. We've cleaned up all of our things here. We've got our applications running a lot better. And more that we can share with you next time here on the channel. Let's see if there's somebody out there that we can raid. I'm going to click through, see what's going on out on Twitch and set up our raid. You know what? You know who we haven't raided? Um, thank you for the follow, Dragon Knight. I appreciate that. You know who we need to raid? Um, oh my gosh, here come some followers. Uh, I was just thinking that ancient coder. Let's set up the raid command. If you're, if you're a subscriber, grab that first line of text. I need to format this a little bit better. Grab that first line of text. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line of text, copy it onto the clipboard, get ready, because we're gonna go raid our friend, Ed Charbonneau. Ed's working on Blazor. He's doing some cool stuff with, it looks like CSS animations over there. Get ready to go say hello to our friend, Ed Charbonneau. He's another one of the live coders streaming here on Twitch. Um, but have those, uh, have those blocks of text copied onto your clipboard so we can say hello when we get over there. This video, like all my other videos, will be available a little bit later on over on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I will not be here on Sunday. I'm actually going to visit uh, visit some family over the weekend, so I will not make it back in time for our Sunday morning stream. That's okay, because um, there's plenty of other folks that are streaming on Sunday as well. All right, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. It's been great spending some time with you. I feel I feel better about how we've cleaned up our GitHub repository here, and we added that sentiment uh, command to the chat bot. All right, get ready to say hi to Ed. I will see you Tuesday. Take care, everybody. <laughs>